Welcome back to Machine is Made. Today, we're going to go ahead and go over the Titan 10M from Titans of CNC. First thing that we're going to do today is do the initial setup by machining this side of the part. And then we will flip the part over in video two and go ahead and do the finishing work on the part itself. So we're going to get started by going and creating a setup like we always do. The way this part was drawn is sideways. Your Z is pointing this way. Remember, you always want Z up, but for what we are actually doing, we need this side of the part. So we're gonna go in here, model orientation, ZX, click on the top of the Z part that you want to machine, and then it orientates your position accordingly. The next thing that I wanna do is go into stock, and I wanna change from relative to fixed fixed size box, not fixed size cylinder. And I wanna make sure that we have material hanging over and in this case, we don't. Industry standard on a saw cut is 125 thousandths. Like I said, that's pretty industry standard. Outside from that, we wanna go into our post process and change our program number to 8010 and program comment, Titan 10M. Aside from that, I'm going to go back into my setup. This is completely optional for you, but this is something that I always do. I'm going to import a machine. You can simply select beside machine, go into your Fusion 360 library, select what vendor manufacturer you want to use. But for me, mine comes up in recent because this is the one that I always use. So I'm going to go ahead and select this machine, download this model, and we'll be right back. All right, once your machine model is imported, you'll get a new tab under machine. It'll say Haas VF2. You get a position indicator within the machine and under your post-processing, Fusion will import the correct machine work coordinate system. And in my situation, we're gonna do work coordinate system. We are gonna use G54 and we're just gonna simply click OK. Now, if you choose to use a machine, it will import your machine to turn that off, you just down click the chevron and simply turn that eyeball off. Now the next thing that we need to do is order of operations. So first of all, we're gonna face the part. We're gonna come back and we're gonna contour the part. And then we're gonna come back and touch this part of the part, leaving these bosses. And then we will end up drilling all of the holes from this side of the part. And then we will come back and tap these holes from the other side. That's right. I'm going to drill it from this side and tap it from the other side. Don't be scared to do this. So like I said, first thing we're gonna do, face. The tool that I'm gonna use, and again, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm gonna use face mill. I'm gonna to go to milling tools under Fusion 360 library and there's my beloved two inch end mill. I'm gonna select that tool. Unfortunately, it brings in default settings. I will change these settings to 3500 and my cutting speed to 40 inches a minute. And then only thing I have to do is, I don't have to do it, but I'm gonna do it, is go to lead in and lead out and simply turn that off. I will go to passes and change my step over to 1.8 inches. I just find that just looks better on the part. And I'm simply gonna click okay. And since Fusion knows exactly where the top of those bosses are, that's all it faces down to. So the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit of 2D adaptive clearing. So I'm gonna go to 2D adaptive clearing. The tool that I'm gonna use can be found under flat end mill, milling tools, and 5 eighths. I'm going to use aluminum roughing because that's the proper feeds and speeds for what we're going to be doing. I'm going to mash select. A few changes I'm going to do under my passes. I'm going to change this optimum load to 175 thousandths. I'm going to change my stock to leave to 10 thousandths. Turn smoothing on. Change this amount to 1 thousandths and turn feed optimization on. Then go into my geometry and select the three bosses. That's all you have to select. And then click OK. There's my toolpath, one and done. 
Now the next thing that I want to do is to go to 2D Contour, same tool. I'm going to click on this part of the profile, go to my Heights tab, and then I want the bottom to come down here. So bottom height from selected contour, toe, model, bottom. There's no contour down here to select. Then under passes, because there are some pretty good sized chamfers, I want to do some roughing passes. I want to have my maximum roughing pass at 175 thousandths. Tell them to control four, go into my geometry, turn stock contour on, so it only cuts the stock area and I don't get a lot of ghost passing and click back into passes double check everything everything looks good and click OK and there is my stock contour down to size now the only thing I have to left left to do on this side is to drill some holes so I'm gonna first inspect to see what size these holes are because I simply don't remember. This hole is 160 thousandths diameter. That's going to be a 1032 drill tap size. And this hole is going to be the same. These outside holes whoop, these outside holes are going to be 260 thousandths. So we'll drill them with a quarter inch from this side and then we'll finish them from the other side. So we can close inspect go up here to drill the tool that I'm going to use again can be found in the fusion 360 library under drilling now since this is aluminum and we're going to use uh, precision drills um, I'm not too worried about having a center drill first this is aluminum and it's only going about three quarters of an inch deep I believe I can hit that tolerance so under diameter my equivalent is going to be a 159 Make sure you have hole making turned on. And there's our number 21 drill. So for aluminum, I'm going to run this drill pretty fast. It's going to be running 300 surface footage into the part, 7200 RPM, 17 inches a minute. Mash select. I will turn peck tapping on. I only do partial peck on my drills. Uh, it's personal preference. And then I'm going to go into geometry and I'm going to select the chamfer. Now the reason why I'm going to select the chamfer is because I'm going to go back into my heights tab and tell it, whoop, don't want that one, and tell it model bottom again. So under heights, whole bottom, model bottom. And look how it corrected everything the drills are at the right height starting in everything looks good and then I'm simply just going to click OK everything's got proper clearance looks like it's gonna do just fine so I'm gonna go back into drilling the drill that I want this time Again, can be found under drill, diameter equivalent to 250. Enter, make sure we have holes selected. And there's my letter E drill or quarter inch. Again, aluminum drilling. Select that drill, go to my geometry and select these four holes. And again, I wanna make sure I'm going into my heights tab and going model bottom then I'm going to go into my cycle tab and I'm going to change that also to chip breaking aluminum is gummy and it loves to stick to end mills drills or any other tool that you can stickly stab into it so you want to make sure you're either doing a partial pack a full pack flood coolant unless you're running carbide you don't technically want to pack carbide um, it can cause a worse problem if a shaven falls into the bottom of the hole and the drill quote unquote deadheads for a second that can cause a major issue but I'm just going to click OK 
and there's those four holes. Now, I know you're probably thinking this part doesn't look finished, and it's not. I still got some chamfers to cut. But when we rotate this part over and we cut this cap off, or hat is what it's known in the industry as, all them holes will be revealed, and we will be ready to go. One small change that I do want to do and double check is go back to my first drilling operation and make sure I'm going all the way through. I'm going through the model, but I really need to go through the stock. And then I want to drill through that and add another 50 thousandths. Because I'm going to use this center hole to set my G54 on the other side of my part. The other holes honestly don't matter. So when I roll my part over, I will use this hole right here and a coaxial indicator to pick this location up and all of the features will line up correctly. But the last thing that I'm gonna do on this particular part is cut all the chamfers. So under 2D contour, the tool I'm going to use is engraving chamfer mill. Go into milling tools and right here this half inch 45 degree. Select that tool and go to the bottom of my chamfers. Oop, not that one. It shouldn't cut. I don't know why it's showing it. Don't be afraid to zoom in and out to get your correct position that you want. All right, so I didn't do the little ones. I know why. Lead in and lead out is turned on. This can be a, a, a kind of a pain if you're using a bigger tool. Just turn that off and you'll be able to reach what you need. I need to chamfer the outside of these bosses. And click OK. All right. So I do need to offset the tip. So I'll go back and edit. Go into my passes tab, chamfer tip offset, and I'll offset this 50 thousandths. And the reason why I'm going so small is this feature right here. It gets incredibly close. But you're probably thinking, but wait, what about all these chamfers? Good point. Let's get those while we're here. This tool is designed to pierce into material at the tip. So you can come in here and back chamfer ahead of time. and there would be nothing wrong with it. And if you don't want to spend another operation, have a third operation to relocate the part, you will do this. See, this one's actually missing a chamfer. So is that one. Not my model, guys. And see that tool is piercing that material and coming in and chamfering everything. So I'm actually going to go into the model. If you have this model that I do, I'll show you how to fix this. Go into design, go into modify, go into modify chamfer, click on this and this and change this to 10 thousandths and click OK. Go back into manufacture, right click on the one you just did and edit. Go back into your geometry and then add those two features you just created. And then you'll see everything kind of turned orange. If you'll right click on setup and click generate, it should be regenerate, not just generate. It will go ahead and regen all of your processes that you have done. So in the end, when you go to simulate this part, it's coming in and it's going to contour, adaptive clear to everything. Now these red marks right here, 
or the chamfering tool that's coming in and piercing the material it's not expecting material to be there that's why it's giving you a red alarm flash we'll slow this down when it gets there and you'll see what I'm talking about there it is it's piercing into the material oh it's actually hitting the boss that's no good so let's change that. We'll edit the tool. Go into cutter. I'm going to edit the diameter to 250 thousandths. I have a 250 thousandths diameter tool. So I can just change this to suit what I need. Let's see if that clears regenerate that process and I believe it's actually still hitting right there that's annoying so we can go in and edit and we will change the tip offset to 75 thousandths and I think that's about as far as I can go and now we look like we're clearing on everything. See guys, I'm not perfect either. And there's our part running. Flawlessly this time, I mean, mind you. This is one of the reasons why you'd want to use a cam software is simply to catch little mistakes like that that you're not really anticipating per se. And before somebody says it now, well, why don't you just go ahead and put the holes in from this side? You very well can. There's nothing that would be stopping you from doing the ISO grid from this side of the part. Nothing at all. Uh, the reason why I don't is because I want my ISO grid to be dead perfect in relationship to this contour. That's the only reason why I'm doing it from the second side and not from this side. If I wasn't too worried about that, I wouldn't worry about it at all. But that's going to conclude it for part one of this video. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll be happy to respond to them. But like always, make sure you like and subscribe, and I hope to see you back here.